We have so many young children here, uh, much more than I expected, and I'm sure we'll have some more coming in soon as well throughout the day. So what we're going to do is, as long as we're able to get some names um, of some of the children, um, I've actually I have the names of their parents, and then we'll ask their names when they come in. And then I'm sure there's other kids, some of you guys, that you also want to recite. If, if I don't have your name, it's okay, because we're going to ask you to so you get your chance as well. And everyone will get a chance to, uh, to do some recitation, some dua, whatever, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. Um, and then after that, we'll have uh, Mufti Farhan sit with you guys to give you some advice about um, about school and when you guys go to school and how a Muslim should behave. And if you have questions, you can ask. So, inshallah, this will be the plan for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. And then uh, also we have pizza. We will have pizza for you guys. All right, so that will be a good lunch for you guys. Um, and the pizza is for the children. Of course, if there's leftovers, you can also enjoy. Uh, I'm a big kid also. Um, so inshallah, we'll, we'll begin. And I have some names here. So I'll start with the list that I have, just so, because we have it already. And then we'll, we'll ask everyone else who wants to take a chance also. All right. Um, I'd like to begin uh, with um, Ibn Asrar. Your son is here? Yes, our support? Yes. Uh, for the women, if you turn the TV on and um, one of the HDMI adjustments would have the camera showing the screen. The, the screen here is not for the ladies, but for the men, so you are aware. This is not going into the ladies, this is for us, we'll talk about this throughout the day. So the ladies are seeing the stage and the, and the podium and the mirror through the camcorder, so you just have to turn the TV on and it should be working, it was working fine earlier today. Uh, so we have Brother um, Amar, so inshallah he will recite uh, some Quran for us, so you can begin with our prayer. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
So I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, so Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah khair for that beautiful recitation. What a way to start off um, the program. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we can call on uh, two brothers, uh, one by one, and they're going to do, uh, do something a little different. So I'd like to call on uh, Ibn Sharif, uh, Rani, and Nani. So whichever one wants to come first. So. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, we'll say the small surah that was revealed in Makkah, meaning that when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was living in Makkah, that's the time he was revealed. Reason for revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when in the Prophet's time, Kaiji and Muggins, we should call Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the loser, and this is what Allah had to say. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لحي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Now what is, now what is this mean? By the time the decline day Surely, barely human kinds, men, are in a state of loss, except those who believe. 
and do an act on their good deeds who those who enjoy others and who encourage others to do good deeds with them and by the sun. Now some virtues of the Surah. Scholars know that this surah contains universals of the Islam. For that reason, the companions of the Prophet, Radi companions, Radi Allah, and may Allah be pleased with them, will not leave each other until they read the surah, the surah of the Inshallah, this whole weekend we'll learn more about the Sahabas, Radi Allah, and Imam al Shafi has some wonderful things to say about the surah. Number one, if people were to wonder of this chapter or the surah, you would amaze them. Another thing he says, if, if this surah was the only one sent to us, our humanity, it would be enough for us. And another thing is, people ignore this chapter. So like, they don't follow it, they just leave it and put it aside. Imam Razi put in his scholar saying that he understood the surah by listening to an ice vendor. On a hot day, the ice was melting away fast and he called the people's attention. He said, O oh people, O oh people, you should have mercy on whose mouth is melting away fast. Once we said the surah and understand the meaning of it, we can set some goals for us. I have witness and we I'm as witness, and all human beings are lost except those who have four all characteristics. Those who believe, those who do good deeds, those who encourage others to do good deeds, and those who encourage others to remain patient during adversity. Inshallah, we can all apply this in our life. Amen. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> So I'm going to today, inshallah, I'll be saying that I'm um, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah Ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah Ayya la salam Ayya la salam Ayya la salam Allah is great. Allah is great. I testify to the God of Allah. I testify to the God of Allah. I to the God of Allah. I the God of Allah. Allah. Hayya al come to pray. Hayya al come for success. Allah wa Allah is praise. La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. Ministry of the Veil. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu Muhammad peace be upon him, from Sahaba. He gave looking for various means for calling people to the Master, for Salafah. The institution process started among the Muslims. People came up with many suggestions. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa discussed the merits of each of them and every suggestion with the Sahaba. Some of the suggestions were lighting a fire, putting up a bell on the masjid of the Messenger of Allah, bringing a flat bell made out of flat music for the sheep of metal, blowing into a conch, seashell, blowing to a horn, sending people to the surah, Surrounding, calling others for prayer. One night, Abdullah bin Zayed had been freed. The next morning, Abdullah bin Zayed, but the Allah came rushed to them and ushered them to the presence of Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
the child from the street. <coughs> Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, liked it very much. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the Lord of the day, the Lord of the Earth, that his dream was a true vision from Allah. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then asked him to teach the words in the name of man. A former slave, as he had a much louder and more hilarious voice, was loved as a and called the first of God. Upon hearing the first of God, the more being the bed, as a lot of people rushed to mass and the most of the problem of the messenger to work on the road. He told the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he had the seat also seen the exact same dream. <laughs> so next year we'll be writing and taking some lectures which are going to give us some people who may not know those things. Um, Alright, so now um, I'd like to invite Abdullah um, Adin, um, Muhammad Abdullah, who will be beside us. Um, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر والليل العشر والشفع والوتر والليل إذا يسر هل في ذلك قسم الذي هجر ألم تر كيف فعل يبقى بعاها إن رداكم الذي يبتل محاق البلاد فتنمون المدين جعل الشق في الواد في العون بالفوتات الذين قضوا في البلاد فأكثر فيهم فساد أصف عليهم تبقى صوت علاد إن يبقى الفساد فأمم الإنسان سان إذا مرت الله يقوم فأكيمه نعمه فيكون يبي أكيما فأما إذا مرت الله فقتل عليك يسكب فيكون يبي أمانا كلا فلا تقيمون اليتين ولا تحادون Allah ta'an miskin Ataqeeun atya fa akdallamma Atahibbunan ma'ala wabbanun Jamma Kalla Ida dhukhatil ardus Tanun Takka Kujja Ayakukun Atmaku Safan Safa وجيك أيوم إذن يتخنم يوم إذن يتذكر إنسان وأم ما له الذكر تكون عليتني قدمت لهياتي فيوم إذن تعجب وذابه أحد ولا يوصف ولا تضوه أحد يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة رجيئة فهي تنبدية فدخلي إبادي ودخلي جنتي صدق الله العظيم so now um, I'd like to invite Bin um, Mustafa, Brother Mustafa's daughter.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشهر وضحاها والقبر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يقشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طهاها So next, um, we have uh, Ecclesia. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس مالك الناس إله الناس من شر الأسوار الخيرات الذي يصرف في سجون الناس من الجنة والناس All right, so we'll now call on uh, Binti Tahir. She will be doing the machine. So now um, we'd like to call on Binta uh, Green, Green Vice Bar. So she read a dua that most of us adults are familiar with, but now the children should also be familiar with. And she read the dua of getting into a car and transporting. So I'm going <coughs> So now um, I'd like to call on um, Binti Alam. Um, 
Diyeceğim başlayalım. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nun vel kalemi ve ma yasturun. Ma ente bi nimeti rabbika bi majnun. Ve inneke la ajran gayran nun. فَسَتُبْصِرُ وَيُبْصِرُونَ بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونُ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ ضَلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ فَلَا تُطِعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ وَاتَّقُوا لَهُ تُدْهِنُ فَيُدْهِنُونَ وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَّكِينٍ هَمَّادٍ مَّشَّاءٍ من عن الخير عدد أثيم عطل بعد ذلك زنين أن كان ذا مال وبنين إذا تدى عليه آياتنا قال أساطير الأولين سنسمه على القرطوم إنا بلوناهم كا بلونا أصحاب الجنة إذ أقسموا لا يصلونها مصبحين ولا يستثنون فطاف عليها طائف من ربك وهم نائمون فأصبحت كالصرين فتنادوا مصبحين أن اغضوا على حوثكم إن كنتم صارمين فانطلقوا وهم يتغافتون أن لا يدخل النهى اليوم عليكم مسكين قعدوا على حوض قادرين فلما رأوها قالوا إنا لضالون بل نحن محمون قال أوسطهم ألم أقل لكم لولا تصدقون قالوا سبحان ربنا إنا كنا ظالمين فأخبر بعضهم على بعض يتلاعمون قالوا يا غيننا إنا كنا طاغين عسى ربنا يبدلنا خيرا منها إنا إلى ربنا راضبون كذلك العذاب والعذاب الآخرة أكثر لو كانوا يعلمون إن للمتقين عند ربهم جنات النعيم أفنجعل المسلمين كالمجرمين ما لهم كيف تحكمون أم لهم كتاب فيه تدرسون إن لكم فيه لما تقيرون أم لكم أيمان علينا بالغة إلى يوم القيامة إن لكم لما تحكمون سألهم أيهم بذلك زعيم أم لهم شركاء فليأتوا بشركائهم إن كانوا صادقين يوم يكشفوا عن ساق ويدعون إلى السجود فلا يستطيعون خاشعة أبصارهم طرقهم بذلة وقد كانوا يدعون إلى السجود وهم سالمون وظني ومن يكذب بهذا الحديث سنستورجهم من حيث لا يعلمون فأمي لهم إن بيدي متين أم تسألوهم أجرهم فهم من مغرم مثقلون أم عندهم الغيب فهم يكفبون فاصبي لحق ربك ولا تهم أصاحب الحور إذ نادى وهو مكفور لولا أن تداركه نعمة من ربي لنبذ بالعراء وهو مكفور فاجتباه ربه فجعله من الصالحين وإن يكاد الذين كفروا لا يزلكونك بأبصارهم لما سمعوا الذكر يقولون إنه لاجنون وما هو إلا ذكر للعالمين صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله uh, so now I'd like to call on uh, Ibn Salafuddin, mashallah, this is a brother who came here from New York with his family. Uh, he was here yesterday, uh, he's returned again, and uh, mashallah we have his son here, so he will do some recitation. <laughs> أعوذ 
بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم نزل عليك الكتاب منه أحد نزل عليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه وأنزل التوراة وأنزل التوراة والإنجيل من قبل هدى للناس وأنزل الفرقان إن الذين كفروا بآيات الله لهم عذاب شديد والله عزيز ذو انتقام إن الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء هو الذي يصوركم في الأرحام كيف يشاء لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابها فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب صدق الله العظيم And this is a brother that made struggle to come here, mashallah, from all the way from New York to London. Uh, also, his sister would also like to be in the sheet as well. Bismillah.
is not that the small at the beginning of Layla and Yoga, not the small at the Nutsen Journal, and not the rest of the world. And I'm a gentle messenger of my Lord of God. Those who have the morning light, the sun has heard the red light, and those who go to sleep have to walk upon. Not the city has shut up, not the strain the things we know to make our knowledge grow in this land. Once we leave the world and see that we know it's not a that this world will be a bad man. And hope for the grand the book of God, that it's a bad man in word of God. We just want this word, and that we try to know that this world is getting up, that we love it. For the messenger, I'm not a rescuer, a lover, a lover, and I'm not a messenger, a lover, a lover, a lover. Now, so now we'll just be that day to give us that stuff for that day. As for the bigger of the day, the proper day, the last of the day before we. It's a, it's a very detailed sheet and a, a lot of wisdom and lessons to be learned from it. So now we have a lot of children here that may not have had a chance to recite either yesterday or today. So just raise your hands. Who's ready? All right. We'll, we'll start with you. Come on. Come on up. This is uh, Mashallah Ibn Khalid. What's your name? Waleed Mashallah. Today I'm going to say in terms of that. A'udhu billahi min rashaytan al-rajim. Bismi billahi al-rahman al-rahim. Sabbahi ismi rabbika al-ha'la. Al-lazhi khalaka fasawa. Wal-lazhi qaddara fahada. Wal-lazhi akhraja al-ma'a. فَجَعَلَهُ بِكَاءٍ نَحْوَى سِنَّةُ الْأُطْفَ لَا تَنْسَى إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُمْ يَعْلَمُ الْجَحْرَ وَمَا يَخْفَى وَلَوْ يَصِرُكَ لَنْ يُشْرَى فَذَكِّرْ إِنْ نَفَعْتِ الْفِكْرَى سَيَجْدَكَّ مَنْ يُخْشَى وَلْتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى الَّذِي يَصْنَى اللَّهُ قُبْرَى ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَى وتأفلها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفسقه في الأولى في إبراهيم وموسى 
Alright, so who else? Who else wants to come? What do you want? Okay. Russia, very good. You hear me? Soon I Next, Asha. Really? Asha? Uh, can we next?
with two red elephants and giant dinosaurs. When you see a butterfly, remember it was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create. Nobody else can create. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create. Nobody else can create. So you're going to continue the bayan inshallah after, after. Some people worship idols, but idols cannot create anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and belongs the east and the west. When I will return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is near to our hearts and closer than our minds. Nobody can hide from him. When he wants to create something, he says be and it becomes such as his power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see us, but we cannot see him. He is not a man, he is not a woman, he has no parents and no children. Nobody made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made everything. Okay. So, um, we'll be inviting him again for next year's pathway to Jannah. Uh, I believe we found a new khatib. May Allah reward him, Mashallah. That was uh, what we call freestyle, Mashallah. Should be speaking at the doors, you know. I mean, on uh, Yakin and uh, you know, the greatness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That was amazing. So we have also um, Ibn Asrar, mashallah, and his younger son. <laughs> Alright, so I'm sure we have a few more kids that want to recite and we have a full day today. We also have a full day tomorrow. So whoever didn't get a chance, please just talk to me whenever you see me. I'm not going to yell, I'm not going to get grumpy. And we'll make a list and we'll add you guys throughout the day. So. The goal is for you guys to stay. So you should be staying today. There's pizza, there's lunch, there's dinner. Your parents should stay. Um, your siblings, brother, sister should stay. And then again tomorrow, you should come back so that you also listen to the lectures and you also get a chance, whoever didn't get a chance, you get a chance to recite the show. So now um, what I'd like to do is this will be a short 20-minute, um, 15, 20-minute um advice for the kids um, by our keynote speaker, uh, Mufti Farhan. So he will talk to them about some of the uh, advice for them for school. Um, for example, some of the older kids uh, in terms of how to get uh, their, at least their, their Juma during the school day, things of that nature. But of course, it's very important for the parents to also listen because when they leave the masjid, they're under our control, right? They're they're our um, property in the sense that we are responsible for them. So we have to take the advice and make sure we implement it in their lives. And you know, one point that I just wanted to make, uh, we have kids of different ranges, different ages, so this is for you, for you kids. So you kids listen to me. And what I'm saying is, you should be happy that you had a chance to be able to speak in front of so many people and practice all week. This is a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a great blessing. Don't be upset if you didn't get a chance, because you will get a chance, inshallah. 
And don't be upset if maybe you made a mistake or if maybe you didn't memorize the long surah or something like that. Everybody is different. Everybody has different ages. Everybody has different times. Everybody learns differently. And it's the parents' responsibility. Uh, this is a reminder to myself and a, and a reminder I mentioned yesterday as well um, that we give our children the opportunity to soak in the blessings. We have the opportunity. We come to the masjid, we go to New York, we go here, we go there. So we're selfish. But then how do we make sure our children get the same opportunity? So we, we should be bringing them to the masjid. We should be taking them to the programs. We should be doing talim in the house. So whatever it is that we do, we should also think about our children and give them the equal and fair opportunity to advance their deen. And inshallah, you never know someone that is only reading Alim Batasa in maybe a higher age, within a few years' time, he can become a hafiz. It's not, it's not impossible. We have seen many, many children in this community become hafiz. There are many children that are aspiring to become hafiz. They're, they're currently in the school to become hafiz. And this is a great opportunity to gain that um, desire for the children. And that's why we ask them to, to recite. Um, to, so that they get a desire, because it's, it's a little bit of a friendly competition also. And that way, they get the desire. So we have to keep that little candle burnt for the next 24, 48, 7 days a week, 30 days a month, and for the whole year and for the rest of their lives. So we have to keep giving them those opportunities. Uh, that will be it for me, and inshallah now we'll have a uh, time to come up and uh, just give some advice for the children. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. wa سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وبشرفي صدري وسري أمري واحفظ بقدة من لساني يتكون من قولي ربي السر ولا تأسر وتمنك لنا بالخير يا قدته يا قدته يا قدته So before I begin, inshallah this session is not going to be very long It's going to be inshallah for 15 to 20 minutes max So I would want all of our youngsters, mashallah all of you youth and of course if our adults who are present here to please give me your utmost attention. So that's not going to be for a long time, but I want you guys to focus completely. If we lose our focus once, we'll miss out everything. So make sure that you give me that focus. It is mentioned, this is a story before we start. They say there were three good friends who were traveling. So when these three good friends were traveling, they, in, in the way of their travel, they found a piece of cookie. So all of them love, I don't know, Oreos or chips or whatever you guys love. So they love this one piece of cookie. There was only one. So now all three of them, you know, became anxious to take that piece of cookie. So now the three friends says, who's going to take this? So one said, I should take it. The other said, I should take it. The other said, I should take it. They said, you know what? We'll keep the cookie and we'll wait for any one of us to see the best dream. Anyone who goes to sleep and sees the best dream, We'll take this cookie. So now at night when they go to sleep, they wake up the next morning. So the first person says, I saw a dream. And stop for all. These kids are, they're lying. Stop for all. They're doing the right thing. So the first guy gets up and says, I saw the best dream. I saw myself on the first heaven. It was so beautiful. I could see this entire place. And the skies were so beautiful. The angels were surrounding. And I have the cookie. So the second guy goes, hold on. Second guy goes, I saw a dream that I was also sleeping and I was taken by the angels and I went to the seventh heaven and I could see you from there and my place was even better than yours and it was much better and nicer and beautiful and I could see even anything even much better so he says can I have the cookie? So the third guy goes hold on so the third guy goes guys I have a bad news goes, what happened? He goes the angels also came to me but they never took me to the heavens but they dragged me next to a cookie and then they started beating me. And then they told me to eat the cookie. <laughs> so I told them that I'm not going to eat the cookie. <laughs> they said, I told them that I'm not going to eat the cookie. They said, why? He says, because I have to see a good dream. He says, no. But they started beating me so much that I finally gave up and I ate that cookie. So the other two friends, you know what they said? They said, why don't you call us for help? He said, I tried calling, 
But one of you was on the first hand and one of you was on the seventh. No one would listen to me. I was screaming my lungs, but no one would listen to me. What's the moral of the story? The cookie will be taken by someone else and our minds will be in some other head. So make sure, keep your minds there, inshallah. Don't keep your minds outside. Just give me 10 to 15 minutes of your time. I already took like 3 minutes already, so now we got 12 more minutes. So make sure you give me your 12 minutes, inshallah, that we can all benefit from. I know some of you are older and some of you are younger, so we have to make a talk in such a way that everyone understands. The topic which we were supposed to speak about today is Muslim identity. Does anyone, like two or three people, can quickly tell me what identity means? If you know what identity, right hand, right hand. Yes, you. Things that make up you. Things that make up you. Okay, good. Understand. Yes. They show their face, and you know that's them. Right? They show their face. Something that makes you and something that shows your face. Good. What else? Last one. Third opinion on identity. What do you mean what identity means? Topic for today. Yes. Let's say that again. Okay, like who you are. Very, very good. Perfect answers. Everyone told a perfect answer. I know some of you guys watch cartoon, right? Some of you? All of you? Alright? So I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm going to give you a color. Look, I'm going to give you a color, and you tell me what superhero that is. Black and yellow. Yes. Batman. Blue and red. Superman. Spider-Man. Spider-Man and Superman. See, I'm not even giving you any more details. Guys, guys, relax. I know, I need everything. So, uh, me too. So, look, I only gave you a color. I only gave you a color. But that color gave you an identity of an individual that was in your minds. It was only a color. There was no other descriptions. It was just a color that came to your mind and you begin thinking about individuals that you thought existed, right? That, that's, that's, that came to our mind. Now I want you to think on a bigger level. Put that, put that to a side. And this will be, I guess it will be hard for our youth, the little kids to understand. But it will be a little bit better for the older students to understand it. A lot of people go to gym. Why do people go to gym? Yes. Yes. People go to gym to exercise. People go to gym to, to exercise. What else? Weight loss. To lose weight. Yes. To stay healthy. Yes. To get buff, very good. That's, that, that, that's my answer. That's my answer right there. Yes. To get kids to get taller, yes. Burn fat. Burn fat. Yes, last one. Yeah. Why do you go to a gym? Why do people go to a gym? Okay, we'll, we'll skip that. So now, okay. So I, I, please give, give me your nine more minutes that you guys got with me. So now a person goes to a gym for a specific reason. Some people say weight loss, it's weight loss, you know, health, gaining, getting buff, you said, very good. Are you from Brooklyn? No? Okay. So, you know, so all these things are, are the, the hopes that a person has after going to a gym. So practically, I don't know if you have ever seen or noticed, that a person who goes to a gym for a few months or a few years, you can practically see a difference, right? If a person walks inside and they go to a gym, you know that this guy goes to a gym, right? What makes you say that? The physical appearance, right? The appearance of this individual is such that he or she does not have to say that they go to a gym. It's just that they're see seeing that individual, you'll know that this person goes to a gym. Now I ask you a question, and that's a real question. And that's the conclusion of what I want to tell you for today. Something that you should take back home from me. A person walks inside. A person walks inside. And they're standing next to you. They're walking around. They're flexing. But you don't notice anything. And finally, they have to actually tell you, Brother, do you know what? I go to the gym, brother. If someone has to tell you that they go to a gym, that means you're not doing a good job. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
If someone has to tell you that they're going to a gym, that means you're not doing a good job. Why? Because you going to the gym should physically show that you're going to a gym. If someone actually has to say from your mouth that, brother, do you know what? I'm going to the gym these days. I know I don't go to a gym. So uh, they say, you go to a gym? So if someone actually physically says that, that means you're not doing a good job. Now I want this to be in your mind. The statement. Please report the statement in your mind. If you have to tell someone that you are a Muslim, you're not doing a good job. If someone has to ask you, are you a Muslim? Or you have to tell someone I'm a Muslim, you're not doing a good job. Forgive me, I'm sorry. Your appearance, your sight, your identity, your presentation, your entire life should be an example of Islam. <laughs> you should be that individual as if you say blue and, and, and red, Spider-Man. If you say black and orange or yellow, whatever, black. all these things come to your mind. If you think of an individual who a Muslim is, your identity should be present. And that is what is required for all of us, is to build such characteristics that ourselves should be the example of Islam. A person who goes to gym shouldn't be telling people, brother, I'm going to gym. If a person is doing so, they are not doing a good job. Go to another gym and get a better trainer. Shall I can tell good people. But if a person themselves, as a Muslim, would need to tell someone, brother, do you know I'm actually a Muslim? That means that we have not done a good job in holding ourselves out. I want to leave you with this advice. Uh, and I know, I don't know if I said this last time when we were together, but uh, I want you to please remember this. Uh, and I told you a lot of things to remember, but this is something really, really special. A pencil. You guys ever seen a pencil? Right? Yeah. Number two, you sharpen it. Brown pencils, colorful pencils. There's an eraser in the back. I want you to imagine a pencil in front of you right now. Imagine that little pencil in front of you that is right there. Before the pencil, not the mechanical one. Is that a mechanical one? <laughs> it's a pen. Uh, that doesn't count. So imagine a pencil, right? I, this is my last thing that I'm telling you. And then you guys are free for the pizza. The only thing between me and you, it's the pizza, so forgive me. So now imagine a pencil in front of you. Eraser, sharpened. When this pencil was being made, the pencil maker told pencil five things. And these are the five things that I tell you. The pencil maker told the pencil, Five things. First thing, the pencil maker told the pencil, keep yourself in good hands. Good work will be taken from you. Keep yourself in good hands. Good work will be taken from you. If you give a pencil in the hand of a person who writes really well, draws very well, they can do so many good things with this pencil. If you go give this pencil to a person who doesn't know how to do anything with the pencil, they'll just waste it. So the pencil maker told pencil five things. Keep yourself in good hands. Good work will be taken from you. Second, whenever you make a mistake, you have been given an eraser. So don't worry. You can wipe away and clean that mistake right there and continue your work. Third advice, sometimes you will be sharpened. But it's not to hurt you. It's to make better work from you or take better work from you. Fourth advice, sometimes you will be used on a soft surface like pen, uh, like, like papers. Sometimes you will be used on rough surfaces. Don't look at the surface, just do your job. Do your writing. Don't look at the surface, just do your job. Fifth and the final one, the most important that I love the most. The pencil maker told the pencil, always remember. The best of you is what's inside of you. What's inside a pencil? Lead. Lead. Lead, right? If there's no lead inside a pencil, doesn't matter how expensive the pen or pencil is, it's not going to work. If there's no lead, it's not going to work. So what did it say? Always remember the best of you is what's inside of you. Now I want you to take these five advice and implement that into your lives. Your own practical lives. Five things, okay? Let's go through this quickly. What was the first advice? 
Close the eyes. Keep yourself in good hands. Good work that we take. Very good. Jazakallah. So the first advice was, keep yourself in good hands. Keep yourself in good hands. Good work will be taken from you. What does that mean? It means to keep yourself in the company of good people. When you will keep yourself in the company of good people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take a lot of good work from you. And once you keep yourself in the company of bad, then all the capabilities of individuals will be lost. So the first advice for us, not the pencil. Think about that. Think of that pencil to be you now. So the first thing is keep yourself in the hands of good people. Good work will be taken from you. Keep your company good. Second thing. What was the second advice? Yes. There's always an eraser. Very good. Jazakallah. What does that mean? You might make mistakes in your lives. We're not sinless. We're not perfect. Allah has given something known as Toba and repentance. Raise your hands. Shed a tear if you can. And Allah will forgive all your sins. Allah has given us an eraser in our life. That is Toba and asking Allah for repentance. So never lose hope on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the third advice? Yes. Good job. Zakallah. You will be sharpened. And what does that mean? Not every day of your life will be perfect. Not every day of your life will be the day that you plan to be. Sometimes there will be things in school which you will not like. There will be things in house that you will not like. There will be things that in the part that happens along with your friends which you don't like. But all of these difficulties and trials are there to make you a stronger person to Allah. Mm -hmm. And to take better work in your lives. What was the fourth advice? Yes. And then you must fulfill your responsibility, right? Very good, exactly. So the fourth advice was that you might be used in, in rough surface, soft surfaces, but your responsibility to, is to do your job. What does that mean? That means sometimes you will meet people who are very nice. And sometimes you might meet people who are very rude. But what's your responsibility? Treat them in the best manner. Don't treat the people according to the way they treat you. Treat them with the manners of the Prophet of Allah. Don't look towards how people are treating you. But consider your treatment to be the responsibility upon your own selves. And what was the last and final advice that, that, that was given? Yes. It's the best. Yes. So the fifth thing was to tell the pencil. Remember the best of you, it's what's inside of you. And what does that mean? That means it's not what you wear. It's not what you drive. It's not what you have in your pockets. It's not what you have in your possession, which makes you beautiful in the eyes of Allah. It is what's inside your heart, which makes you acceptable in the eyes of Allah. It is something what is inside of you, which makes you great in the sight of Allah. It's not your exterior, it's not your things, it's not your possessions, it's not your new Jordans, it's not your new Gucci, some, some whatever it is. It's not the things that make you reliable, acceptable, or, or, or great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is indeed what is inside of you. If there is no lead in a pencil, it cannot function, it cannot work, it cannot do its job. Same way if we don't find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, no matter what we achieve in this life, we will have nothing. So the five advices which were given to the, to the pencil are things that I request you to keep in your life for them. Five things for every youth and even our adults. They keep these five things as a focus. Keep yourself in the company of good people. Good work will be taken. Whenever you make a mistake, come back to Allah. Allah will forgive you. Times will be up and down, difficult times. But they are there to make us stronger individuals. Bring the characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ in your lives. And always remember the best of you is what's inside of you. Never lose what's inside of you. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never lose, never compromise. But what is inside of you for those things which are outside? Because for everything which is outside will leave one day. For everything that we have will be left behind one day. I don't know if you have ever seen... A, a, a prayer of a deceased person, a janazah. If you have ever seen a person who has passed away and you have prayed the janazah or the funeral prayer, what happens at the end of the prayer? They say, take the body, take the mayyits, 
take the deceased to the graveyard. No one ever says take Farhan to the graveyard. No one even says the name of the person who passed it. Even your own name is taken away from you. And nothing goes with you except for what is inside it. So hold on to your Muslim identities. Hold on to yourself and present yourself as those individuals that will become the beacons and the lights and the examples for the person to come until the day of day. I know I exceeded my 15 minutes. A little bit, are we ready for the kids to be? All right. So inshallah, if you guys do have any questions, inshallah, I will be here. And of course, you can definitely ask these questions further. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live our life in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And I humbly request you, inculcate the habit of prayer, even at this time. Inculcate the habit of prayers. Be our five times prayers. Be our Jummah prayers. Be the obedience of Allah. Inculcate that into your life. And this is the best thing that we can do at this moment. Allah allows us to practice whatever God has been said to Allah. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we were recording these so that us parents can review the advices that Islam has given us because, as I was saying earlier, we have to help our children. They, they can't help themselves, the children. They, they can go left, right, center, any direction that they choose. And the rest of the world is pushing them in all different directions. So as parents, we need to understand the advices and the importance of the advice and then help steer our children on the right path, on the path of the So one minute before the pizza is given out, just one reminder that there is a quiz program for the kids that are all here. And um, kids up to the age of 14. So what I'm going to do during the time of everyone eating pizza, I'll take the names and the ages and grade of, of the children that want to participate in the quiz. So what we'll do is, well, the point is you stay for the program today and tomorrow so you learn about the different Sahaba because the quiz will be about different Sahaba. So tomorrow, after the completion of Pathway to Jannah, we will actually hand out the quiz and we will make groups of the kids. So the younger kids will be grouped with the older kids and then there will be a team that way and then the team can win the competition and therefore get a small, you know, there's, there's prizes involved. So, inshallah, what I'll do is I'll hand out, I'll be carrying the clipboard to take this registration. And again, the point is, don't just write your name down, but the point is to stay. So if you want to take the quiz, it means that you are planning to stay for the program as best as possible, and then planning to stay tomorrow. And if you have to go home for some reason, then you can listen online, and this way you'll learn about the Sahaba. And that's what the course of the next few sessions will be about. It will be about the different Sahaba. Uh, which are our guiding stars. Uh, inshallah, after the pizza, again, the pizza is for the children, so there will be a few boxes for the children sent over to the ladies section, and there will be pizza for the kids here. Um, after, we'll make adhan in a few minutes um, for Dohar Salah at 1.15 sharp. We will have a bayan by Mufi Farhan on the heroes of Islam. Uh, the bayan is going to be beneficial, again, for children as well, and uh, for everyone, so it's not just for adults. And then, inshallah, after the lecture, after Zohar, there will be the lunch for all the adults, inshallah. Um, any questions about the schedule? Their schedule is posted. Um, any issues with parking? Try your best to park at the bank. Uh, also, um, throughout the day, you can text in your questions. Uh, the number to text in your questions is 203-941-1500. All right, well, someone turned off the projector. All right, so the, the, the number, the, the text process, instead of handing out cards for questions and so forth, what we'll do is we'll have a, a text number so people can text in their questions. And I'll be putting that number up on the screen throughout the day, later on in the day, and also we'll, 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 uh, we'll tell the ladies in, in the sister section what that number is. So, inshallah, now the kids can go and enjoy the pizza. We can make our preparation for the salah. Um, uh, Brother Arif al-Islam, if you could please uh, give the adhan for Zohar, inshallah, and uh, we'll begin uh, shortly with the salah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar Allah 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي Okay, you're the first. 